Hey, this Brian. Hey. Oh, wow, I'm rolling right now. On March 19, 2004, we investigated the possibility of a section of Route 66 as the source of the spook light. We placed one camera crew at an observation point near the Missouri State Line on New Spook Light Road and another crew 10 miles away near the railroad crossing on Route 66. The crew on Route 66 flashed a spotlight and car headlights for our camera set up 10 miles to the east. It's unclear if the crew on New Spooklight Road captured our spotlights on camera, but during this experiment, an Ottawa County Sheriff's deputy stopped to question the crew at the railroad crossing. Hey, Brian, uh, can you see the cop lights? You can't? Do what what do you see? No, I really don't see a flashing light like it would be a, a cop light. I really don't. But you know, it's it's like huh. there might be something right there though. Hey, that looks like a flashing cop light. His blue emergency lights can be seen in this enhanced video. I thought I saw something down a dark and lonely road it Keeps me warm in quiet times and nights when I'm alone People ask me what it was, I tell them I don't know But keep looking, just keep looking for the light Look for the light Although a case can be made that the spook light originates near this section of Route 66 from a combination of ordinary lights, some witnesses say the spook light does some very unordinary things. Sometimes it would be at a higher level up near the, the treetops and then it would kind of descend down closer to the road. In the dark on this country road, the spook lights take on a life of their own. They dance, popping in and out. Flare like a furnace. They appear to merge. Then split apart, string out and float in the sky, swirling like a necklace of stars on a string. Is there any way you can block and test? Light is very interesting, you know, it's a, it is a very good example of refraction and diffraction, two common things, and uh, gives rise to uh, something which looks like um, uh, spooky, you know. University of Arkansas physics professor Dr. Rita Vias, who has been teaching optics for more than 20 years, says the spook light can be explained by two theories, diffraction patterns of light and refraction of light. If you are looking at the two car headlights, and if the car is at a distance of about 10 miles, instead of two headlights, you will see one headlight. But there is almost always more than one car on this section of road, in addition to the railroad caution lights. See what is happening? These, all these diffraction patterns are overlapping, and you are seeing kind of one big light. The spook light is rarely steady, Instead, it seems to blink and jump like a penny in the bottom of a swimming pool. The wind may be blowing, and the wind blows, then, you know, you are seeing some kind of a, a mirage kind of effect. You know, it's a kind of fluctuations in air wind is uh, due to refraction, and that's what is flick causing the flickering. Two of our cameras captured this second light that appeared in the trees to our left at the same instant. This faint light lasted for about a minute, then vanished. Through the years, a few visitors have reported a strange red or green light floating above the ground. Bill Miser and six of his friends saw it in 1903. 
Dr. Ward, in his 1945 study, saw a greenish ball of light approach his group of observers. And a member of our investigation team saw a red puddle of light. There was this light that was more spread out, not like concentrated like the spook light seems, but it was more spread out on the road and it was this reddish color. It was not the same color as the light off in the distance. And it seemed like it was moving, moving towards me. And I just, I, I mean, I can't explain it, and, but it just it really scared me and I started, you know, to kind of back off really quickly. And um, Some investigators are satisfied with the theories of refraction and diffraction of light to explain the spook light. But the 1977 Churchwell photograph and the second light captured by our camera need a separate explanation. The geology of the land could provide another answer. So it takes some kind of electromagnetism to keep it up there. Where is that coming from? Well, it's got to come from the yurt somewhere. You know, it's either from underground or, or I don't think it's on the surface. And this is what we got to find out. We got to do some kind of geological survey of the areas. Mining in the tri-state area stopped more than 30 years ago, but the land still bears the scars left from excavations. Lead and zinc ore is found in these porous layers of highly fractured limestone. A recent government survey concluded that these natural underground caverns and the mines are filled with water that is slightly acid and highly ionized. This means the water can hold and conduct electrons. All these factors may combine like the components of a car battery. Electrons can be stored in the acidic water of the underground caverns. Some of these caverns are encased by lead and zinc ore. If electrons somehow enter this system and get stored in the ionized water, then an electrical charge may build up over time. On occasion, this energy may be released. When this happens, visible light may be created above the ground. No previous investigations have mentioned this possibility. This unique geology may generate a rare form of the spook light, separate from what visitors usually see down New Spook Light Road. The spook light seen down the road is as dependable to its Ozark Mountain fans as Old Faithful is to the Yellowstone tourist. Everyone who visits leaves with a story, but their stories aren't always about the light. We caught some kids out there from uh, Baxter that had a barbecue grill in the middle of the road. They weren't drinking or nothing, they just blocking the road with the barbecue grill and everything. I've uh, interviewed a Native American woman who said she's seen it many times and she uh, places uh, cigarettes as offerings on the ground to kind of uh, bring it out and she said she's, uh, that's a tradition among Native Americans and she said she's seen it many times. I guess it was one of those things you tell each other ghost stories and stuff on the way out there and got each other, you know, psyched up about it and scare the bejesus out of you if you actually saw it. You're not supposed to get out of the car because you're just supposed to drive out there, you turn your car off, and you're supposed to flash your lights on and off seven times. And then you're not supposed to have your radio on or anything, and you're supposed to just sit there and wait for it. It's like kind of a tradition, because the little road that leads down to it, it's kind of like a, I guess you'd say lover's lane type place. So you go out there with a friend, you know, and it's 
six pack of beer and wait till this thing comes around. It's a big party place. After they get bored waiting for it, they'll bring out some beer and start drinking. That's a big place. I think um, it's a common place for policemen to check every once in a while if they get bored. It's bad because it mag it's a magnet for some of the troublemakers. They go out there, they'll party, or we have one incidents where one night a drunk went down through there and swiped swipe about five vehicles. That's what it's big, uh, mainly about, is for them to go out there and enjoy themselves, not for people to go out there, drink, litter up the place, and cause problems. It's something that is beyond ourselves, and we need to try our best to fathom it and to respect it as it is. It's a wonderful thing. It's, I would believe, the only thing like it in this world, and it's just something that people should treat with respect and not just say, hey, that's nothing, let's go on. Something that not every other place has. I mean, that's, I guess, the only thing that we have to ourselves, you know? I mean, it's our life that we grew up with and we know about it. It's something that if a child sees it, he or she will never forget seeing it. You could say it's a national treasure but just because it's inexplicable. I mean, no one has, you know, explained exactly what it is. <laughs> Hello, sweetie. You gonna look at this book light? Huh? You gonna grow up and tell us what it is one day? <laughs> Some say every hill and holler in the Ozarks carries a unique story. Nestled on this dirt road is the story of the spook light. Almost every night, in its own voice, the light speaks to the heart of anyone who chances upon it. This light is a living legend, and a full explanation is waiting somewhere down this road just beyond our reach. I thought I saw something down a dark and lonely road. It keeps me warm in quiet times and nights when I'm alone. People ask me what it was, I tell them I don't know, but keep looking, just keep looking for the light, look for the light, everywhere that you go, look for the light, cause tonight it could show, look for the light, everywhere that you go. Cause tonight it could show And though I'll never find out All there is to know I keep looking, just keep looking for the light